Hello there, friends and followers. This is Q8 Pilot, and I welcome you to another Microsoft Flight Simulator video. Today, we are going to be taking a look at performance, and namely how Microsoft Flight Simulator utilizes the available horsepower in your PC to render those beautiful graphics. In this video, we are only going to be looking at the graphics settings and the settings that affect performance. I will be making other videos to cover all the other settings in the future. In order to provide you guys with a baseline, I will provide you with all my current PC settings. I'm using an Asus Maximus iX Formula motherboard, a KB Lake i7-7700K um, processor overclocked at 4.7 GHz in this video, 64 GB of RAM, an Asus NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti with 11 GB GDDR6. I have two 1 terabyte M.2 SSDs whereby Microsoft Flight Simulator is installed on one of them. I have an 8 terabyte hard disk and my PC is liquid cooled. As far as the monitor, it's an Asus uh, PG279Q. It's a G-Sync monitor capable of delivering 165 Hertz refresh rate and it is a 2K display. I have now enabled all the performance counters. As you can see here, we have the GPU at 66 Celsius and at 1845 uh, megahertz, uh, utilization is pretty high as you can see, 98%. The memory, uh, however, is not that, uh, about seven gigs of the available RAM is being uh, currently used. Uh, the CPU is currently at 65 uh, Celsius, which is normal. Um, now, when I overclock to uh, 4.5 gigahertz, uh, I actually get um, the, the temps uh, are much lower. So I get them in the upper 40s uh, or uh, lower 50s. Uh, so slightly uh, you know, warmer uh, temperature there for the CPU. What's interesting to see is that all the cores are being utilized. We're getting about 44 FPS, which is pretty good. And uh, the RAM is about 19 gigs of RAM from the available 64. So definitely um, not really a, a big taxation on, on your RAM, uh, but everything looks good here. If you look at the SIM, you know, if we pan, uh, around here, you can see that it's very smooth. There are no stuttering whatsoever. If I um, actually move here inside the cockpit, uh, as you can see here, um, very, very smooth movement. Uh, whether we move fast, whether we move slow, uh, whether we pan uh, in any direction, um, you know, you were getting solid uh, 46 FPS right now. Uh, which is very, very good, uh, considering that we're uh, running uh, uh, ultra settings. So let me show you uh, very quickly uh, what the sim is running at right now. Uh, we are running at full screen at a 2K display, 256 by 1440. Uh, global rendering quality says custom. We can move this to ultra. Uh, V-Sync, of course, is turned off because I have a G-Sync monitor. Everything else here is pretty much maxed out, except for the texture super sampling, which is six by six, and uh, the terrain shadows is one notch down at 1K instead of 2K. Now, 2K is definitely gonna give you um, much sharper shadows, um, but we're gonna see the effect of moving this to uh, 2K and we're gonna assess, uh, you know, the whether it's actually worth going to 2K um, when considering performance versus visual quality. Um, everything else, as you can see here, is on ultra. Um, depth of field, uh, lens correction is turned off. Uh, lens flare is on and the rest of the uh, plane models and for multiplayer and AI traffic is both, both turned on. If we move on to the traffic, uh, I think it's worthwhile showing you guys uh, what are the settings here as well. Um, airport vehicle density, and all of these are set to 50%. Uh, land and sea traffic is set to 60%. Okay, so the, these are the settings. Now, one thing uh, worthwhile mentioning here is 
is the anti-aliasing. Now, anti-aliasing is something that will, when you when you normally when you encounter clouds or any any textures that are white in color, um, anti-aliasing will definitely tax your CPU. So we're going to take a look at this here, and we're going to see how Microsoft actually handles all of this um, when we have you know very heavy clouds or or an overcast condition. Uh, now, one thing to note is that if you're going to put the render scaling uh, at more than 100%, then it is highly recommended that you use TAA uh, for anti-aliasing to get rid of the jagged lines. Uh, however, um, do note that this is going to definitely provide higher quality at the cost of performance, uh, for sure. So, now that we have all of this here, let's go back to the sim, and we're going to say apply and save. And we're gonna say resume. And as you can see here, we are getting solid performance here in terms of the FPS. All our temperatures are currently in the safe range. And what you can see that is uh, of interest to me is actually the CPU. The CPU utilization is pretty low. Uh, so 35, about 35 to 40%. So less than 50% is very, very good. But look at the um, GP utilization. Um, it's almost at the, at the max. And of course, I'm overclocking my uh, GPU. So you can see here that I'm getting 107%. And of course, you get the fan speeds and all that good stuff. All right, so all my cores are currently at 4.7. They are kind of being utilized equally. If, if we look here, uh, this is the overall utilization here. And this is the overall temperature, so the average temperature of all the, all the cores. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to release the parking brake now. And we are going to take off. All right, and rotate. And as you can see now, the performance is still pretty good, pretty stable, and very solid. Let's trim the aircraft here a bit. Again, if we pan and we look through here, uh, through the windows, left on right, um, it looks pretty good. Very smooth, and there are no stuttering, no jitters. Everything looks um, in tip-top shape, really, in terms of performance. Again, if we monitor the um, the temperatures here, I think they're still pretty good. Um, so, in terms of temperature, utilization is, is pretty much the same. Now we're getting to about, you know, you know, we we've hit the 50 percent, but it's it's it nearly never gets there in terms of the CPU utilization. Again, all our CPUs are being utilized, and the use of RAM is uh, is uh, is very stable. So um, that's that. It's not going to go any any higher than this. So definitely, if you have uh, 32 uh, GB of RAM, you should be uh, just fine. Look at that scene; just absolutely beautiful, solid performance, very very good. Yeah. All right. So here is what I want to show you now. Now, this is the performance uh, with the settings that you've seen. I am going to change the render scaling to the max, which is 200. And we're going to say apply and save. And we're going to go back and resume the game. Now you can see that there is a major degradation in performance, but major gain in, in uh, the visual quality. Uh, this looks very, very nice. Still flyable, by the way. And uh, you can see now that um, you know the, the CPU temperature is kind of going up a little bit here. Uh, actually, it's pretty stable, kind of going to you know the 60s. Uh, but overall, uh, yes, we can feel that there is the jitters and, and the stutters. But that is only because um, you know th this is more than what the uh, well, what our you know what my system can really handle. Still flyable though, still enjoyable. Uh, but not, you know, uh, not very ideal, I would say, uh, in, in this case. 
So let's head back and change the uh, setting back to 120. All right, we're going to change this back to 120, but we are going to go and change the super sampling to eight. Uh, let's see here, eight. And we're going to say apply graphic settings, go back and resume. Now we are actually back to the 46 um, FPS, but what we're going to do is we're going to introduce some more clouds. So we're going to come here and we're going to select um, storm. Okay. Now we saw the immediate drop in the FPS, but then it went back up. And now, as you can see, we have about 48 FPS. So performance pretty much is unaffected by the amount of clouds. Look at how much clouds are there uh, right now in the scene. Uh, but it remains to be very solid in terms of performance. As you can see, 48, yeah, our temperature is still safe. Utilization, again, of the memory GPU, uh, me uh, the GPU memory, uh, all the vitals, if you will, uh, are still pretty good. And still, the sim is uh, pretty smooth, as you can see here as I pan. Um, really brilliant, really absolutely brilliant. And if we actually switch to external view, now we're and, and just kind of you know, zoom out, and we can look at a much larger part of the of the graphics and, and the scene being rendered here and there is very little actually almost no degradation in performance whatsoever so this is definitely a modern uh, modern flight simulator that utilizes all the horsepower available um, in your machine uh, to render such beautiful graphics and no matter how involved the scene is as you can see, performance remains really uh, unaffected. Brilliant, really, absolutely brilliant. I'm mean, really impressed with the performance. All right. So what I'm going to do now is uh, we're going to go to... Um, we are going to go back to the graphics uh, settings. And we are going to leave this here. But we're going to add the shadows. So we're going to go to um, right here. And we're going to add... 2000 and we're gonna so 2k now for the for the cloud shadows and we have we'll leave the NTL the super sampling at 8x8 and we're gonna say go back and resume but now we are gonna come here and we're gonna change the time of day right here and we're gonna select um, scattered clouds all right so now you can see that there is a little bit of you know, drop in FPS, but it's not much. So we went from 48, 49 to about 44, 43. So about four or five FPS or so. Um, but the sim looks absolutely gorgeous, as you can see here. Uh, again, the performance is, is very good. And it, you know, as, as we pan here, there are no stutters, no jitters here. That's uh, the scene from the external view. Uh, as you can see, it looks phenomenal. All the shadows, the terrain shadows, reflection of the clouds. Uh, so really, we're we're putting the uh, we're putting my PC to the test here. Uh, now I will tell you that these numbers will probably be a lot less uh, in terms of FPS when you load an aircraft like the Airbus or the seven uh, seven four seven. Uh, those will require. Uh, a little um, adjustment to the settings, but the original settings that I've had actually work pretty well with those big aircraft as well. So if we actually um, change, uh, oh, beg your pardon, that's not what I wanted to do. If we change this back to um, the original settings here, um, so if I go to, um, that's 120, we'll leave that alone. We'll change this back to six by six. And we're going to change the shadow maps to uh, 1024 here. Uh, no, I beg your pardon. That stays here. And this goes here. Yep. And we're going to say apply and save. Now this, resume. Now this is this setting here. As you can see now, we've gained a little bit of uh, maybe two or three FPS uh, at best. But this here actually provides... Uh, for uh, enjoyable experience, even with the 747 and the 
um, Airbus uh, A320. Here are a few tips that I hope you'll find useful if you are uh, about to make an investment and in buying a new setup for Microsoft Flight Simulator or to tweak your existing machine or upgrading it. Um, as you can see and as we have witnessed here, um, the new sim platform uh, will definitely make use of all your available cores. So definitely making an investment in a, um, in a modern processor uh, can improve performance. Uh, however, the CPU, as you uh, have seen, is not really a bottleneck here. And something that is probably less than 4.7 gigahertz would still render the sim uh, with the same experience. The, uh, the GPU, on the other hand, is without a doubt a bottleneck there. And I recommend that you get something with at least 8 uh, GB of VRAM uh, available uh, in order to have a smooth experience, uh, such as the one we're having here uh, in this particular footage. Um, you don't have to go for the 2080 Ti or Ti if that's not within your budget limits. Uh, but definitely something with 8 uh, gigabyte of VRAM is highly recommended. Um, as far as RAM, as you have seen here, uh, we were only utilizing about um, 19 gigs of RAM of the available 64. And so you don't really need anything from uh, anything more than 32 uh, gigs of RAM. Uh, I've done uh, the 747 at uh, London Heathrow and it's just slightly above that, uh, just using, you know, just slightly more resources uh, as far as the uh, CPU and, and RAM. Um, that is really it in terms of your setup. Now, as far as the hard disk is concerned, it is highly recommended that you install Microsoft Flight Simulator on an M.2 SSD or a really an SSD, but don't install it on a regular hard drive. Um, that's just for read and write. Uh, the read and write speeds of an SSD is uh, extremely faster than a regular hard drive. And the M.2 um, SSDs are significantly faster than any other SSD. Uh, so I highly recommend those for faster reads and writes. Uh, a lot more, you know, smoothness. Uh, you can expect things to load a lot faster. Uh, in, in the sim, you expect the sim to load faster just uh, at startup as well. Uh, so definitely um, an SSD, uh, preferably an M.2. In terms of the monitors, I highly recommend that you get a G-Sync monitor to really reap the benefits of you know, all the available features for G-Sync monitors. They work uh, phenomenally well, uh, even at very high refresh rates, uh, such as uh, my monitor here. I'm running it uh, currently at 165 hertz uh, and it runs pretty smooth as you can see here. Uh, again, there are no stuttering whatsoever, no tearing. It just really is a very smooth experience um, all around. Um, that is really it uh, in terms of uh, my recommendations for um, your system setup to enjoy Microsoft Flight Simulator. Well, folks, this pretty much brings us to the conclusion of our video today. On behalf of the entire team at Threshold and for myself, Q8 Pilot, I want to thank you for tuning in today. And until next time, please take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you all very soon. Thanks for watching, and bye-bye for now.